So again, that was when you see the vertex is on the circle, vertex of the angle. You multiply the angle times two to get the arc, or you divide the arc by two to get the angle. I'm still seeing, well, at least on the last circle quiz, I'm still seeing people do that same thing here. It is not the same math. If the vertex of the angle, which in this case, that's the vertex of those angles. If it is not on, I see you in a second. Let me finish this coming. If it is not on the circle, then we don't just multiply by two. Only time we multiply by two is over here when it's on the circle. That one, we had a formula we had to remember. We said when the two lines cross inside the circle, there's a formula. Voice question, Tom? Um, this is just the bell words. We're not on page yet. I'm just doing bell words. So this was the one where we said, okay, the measure of the angle. I guess I'll just kind of write it over the top here. The measure of the angle equals what? Yeah, the measure of the angle. So we were solving for X measure. That's the measure of the angle. What's the formula? When you see the two lines cross inside the circle. We take the two arcs. So again, it's the arcs inside the angles. So don't just immediately take whatever arcs are given. Don't just say, oh, well, I'm just going to take those two arcs and figure it out. You have to have the arcs inside the angle. So I have one of them. Because if this is the angle, we use the two, two arcs that, like, you know, are inside those two crossing lines. So 30 and then down here. But what's the problem? I didn't give you the one down there, right? But I gave you a lot of other stuff. So odds are pretty good. You can figure out the other one. So I would say, well, if I think about what arcs they gave me, I'm given, I'm given that one, I'm given that one, and I'm given this big, gigantic one, right? Well, the only one that's missing out of that whole entire circle, the only one missing is this one right here. That little green section is all that's missing. So if I know all of the other area or all of the other degrees of the circle, what do I do to find that little green section? I think you said this, but if I know all of the other stuff and I've only got one variable, I can solve an equation. How many total degrees in a circle? So if I know the total is 360, and I know all of the rest of the circle adds up to 310, which is what it is. If you add those up, 80 plus 30 is 110. 110 plus 200 is 310. To find this little missing section, I just subtract what I know from the 360. And that tells me that this little green section is 50 degrees. So somehow you have now there is another way to do it. I really actually like the way this student did it, and I could totally do this and make you figure it out this way. Uh, so if we add those two together, by the way, and divide by two, we got 40. So if you didn't finish it out, arc one is now 30, arc two is 50. We add them together and divide by two. What if I would have done this, though? Some people made this mistake. I give you those two arcs there, and I say solve for X. What do you think I can do now? Actually, a couple ways to do it still. What do you think, Ben? Why would I do that? What arc is that? Or what am I going to solve for if I do that? Because I want X, right? 
let me talk you out of it if you were thinking something. So now the other student. Today. So I'm trying to trick him. I'm just asking him a question. Just seeing how confident he is. Just seeing how confident he is. Or never trying to trick a student. So I right now could solve for an angle, right? I can't solve for where X is, but I know these two arcs, the 80 and the 200. Here, I'll erase this little blue section. I don't know that now. I know that there's an 80 and a 200. I know that the angles that intercept those arcs are these two angles, which would be congruent because they're vertical angles. I can solve for those angles. Again, same formula. I'm just solving for different arcs. I'm sorry, different angles. So I know the two arcs that are intercepted by those angles, 80 plus 200, divide by 2, and we get 140. Now, that's not what I want. I want x, but what can I do now to get x? Well, x is an angle. So we don't want to do anything with 300, but you know, we'll come back to that. You are in here when we learn this. So remember when we did this lesson, don't forget about this. What's that mean? Those two angles, any angle that touches that green line, which there's only two in this case, but all the angles touching that green line have to add up to 180. A line is 180 degrees. So if I just split that line into a bunch of angles, those angles still have to add up to 180 degrees. That doesn't change. Again, for the, I'm going to do this just for the newer group. If that line is 180, which I think everybody remembers, the line is 180. If I'm just splitting that into different angles, I didn't change the fact that I started with 180 degrees. I just made more angles out of it. So those two angles would have to add up to 180. Those three angles would add up to 180. Those four angles would add up to 180. So that's what we learned when we did this originally, and I just started drawing a semicircle showing all those angles add up to 180. So X would be 40 that way if I figured it out that one without even knowing this other arc. Now, the last way you could do it, I just want you to understand something. I can still use these two arcs to solve it. I cannot make sure you understand this. How, Isaiah, head up. You just put it down, so I'm assuming you're still listening. Uh, toes tapping, so some people head down listening. Adam, I can still say, well, those two arcs are 280. Right, if I add those two red arcs, 280, I can then say, well, that gives me a total of 80 left. I cannot say what individually those arcs are. I can't solve that. There is no way they're not equal. A lot of kids were thinking they were equal. This arc, although visually it's hard to tell, that arc is a little bigger than that arc. If this point was a lot farther down here, it'd be really easy to tell. Like if they cross way down here, this arc would be super small and that one would be a lot bigger. So you can't say what those individually are. But we don't care what they are individually, right? We just care what this is. We just care what we get when we add them together, because that's what we divide by two. So if I know that added together, because I just subtracted these two from 360, so this arc here and this arc here added together have to be eight, then I could just say divided by two also. So you can still do it with that same formula. You don't need to know individually what they are. You just need to know when you add them together, you get 80, which is what has to be true because that's how much of the circle is left. That's how much of 360 is left, 80 degrees. So again, I didn't need to give you the 30 for you to still be able to solve that. Uh, all right, any questions? Oh, so your first exit ticket will be something from inscribed angles or... Um, I don't know what that lesson is called. It's two lines crossing inside a circle. Look at that. And it'll be about angles and arcs. I'm not going to mix in um, lengths with that. You'll probably have a separate one on lengths later. 
not very many people at all. That's kind of right. Like probably less than 20 people across all my classes got it. Probably less than 10 people got both of them right. Probably less than 20 got one of them. So one's about lengths of lot like line segments. Like if I didn't give you arcs and angles and I said, how long is this segment right here? If I give you those three, like, <laughs> that was just the memorizing formula. I shouldn't say nobody, but like most people did not memorize the formula. That's all you had to do was memorize the formula. Or some people use the wrong formula for the wrong problem. So they did memorize a formula, but they just used the wrong formula in the wrong situation. Uh, all right, any questions on that? All right, so go to your new pages. Uh, page two. Oh. So maybe I said it wrong. That's not. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. That's the next lesson. My bad. I was going to say, well, I thought we were on two. Yeah, 269. So we're kind of wrapping up this. I hope this is it. That. Ah. Uh, I don't think we did this at all in this class. Maybe we did get to it. 269 we did? The heights and the... Rhombus? Oh, no. Well, that's 269 if you look in your book. So I was talking about the picture that was up. Talking about page 269. So turn to 269. <laughs> I don't hear a lot of pages flipping, so I'm assuming you're done. Um, I'm going to solve this a different way than the book does. The book just says, here's your formula, memorize it, and do it. The only thing you have to understand is when you get a rhombus or a kite, you just have to be able to recognize those images. So a rot, what is a rhombus? It is quadrilateral, so I didn't kind of drift. Like a square. It, it all That's what I wanted somebody to say. And I created it from a square, if you remember. I took a square and I took the sides of the square and I slid them around and then I angled a couple of them and I created a rhombus. So what does that mean is true about a rhombus? All the sides are the same length, right? If I took a square and I created a rhombus without doing anything but moving the sides and change the length of the sides, in a rhombus, all of these sides are the same length. So that's the first thing you need to, sometimes that's all they'll give you to tell you is that all the sides are the same length. And if it's clearly not a square, it has to be a rhombus. Um, what else is true? And this is the one that's a little trickier to remember. Exactly right, good. These, and this is the important part, these are all right angles. The diagonals are perpendicular. That. Good. You're on fire. Even though you are on the ball. So, this is going to come into play the way I saw the fact that those are perpendicular. If you do this, it doesn't really come into play the fact that they're right angles. Um, as a quick reminder of some other rhombus stuff, and this would also apply to a square. Oh, wait, what else is true besides that? There's one more thing. A rhombus is also another kind of shape. It is a parallelogram. Yeah, you are. I know, right? If only this was for once. So that side is parallel to the opposite side, and that side is parallel. You do actually, by the way, I just kind of joked about that, but when you answer questions, that goes toward your quiz. Great. Like if you make some mistakes on your quiz or you just like get overwhelmed with it. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like it, it was clear in class that you understood it. You were answering questions, you were getting stuff right. I absolutely use that in great. Um, oh my goodness, excuse me. I snuck in. I know, right? Can I, can I steal uh, 
five minutes. That's illegal. Oh, five minutes. All right. Key West. That's where I got married, by the way. Wearing a shirt. Really? really? That's where nobody ever gets married. Either. That's weird. St. Mary's. I'm star of the sea. Uh, let's see. Who's my? Oh. Oh. Stolen. I know. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, I promise I, I, I'm going to take no more than five minutes of time. Has anybody had me come talk to maybe their biology class yet? If you had, bear with me, okay? Because I'm going to give the same speech, but it applies in here too, right? Okay. In a couple of weeks here, you're going to, in this class, you guys are all going to be taking the EOC, yes? Yes. yes. What does EOC stand for? And of course, Right? End of cycle and of course test, right? How much is that test worth? A lot, right? Okay. So I'm sure. Yes. Okay. So I'm looking for the poster. Have you hung the poster up, Mr. Gill? <laughs> oh, it's back here. Perfect. Have you guys seen this poster back here? This girl's probably talked to you about it, right? Those are all test taking strategies for your EOC. Well, I'm gonna break it down for you. I'm gonna make it easy. I'm gonna break it down into three things. You remember all three? Okay, we're gonna see you. I'm gonna test you, okay? But the first thing on the poster tells you to take your time, right? Because when we take our time, right? Mm -hmm. And we pay attention to detail, we're not gonna make as many mistakes, but we literally have. You literally have three hours and 24 minutes to take this test, right? And if you need more time, they'll give you more time. So take your time. That's rule number one. Take, take your time. Everybody say, take your time. Okay. My second tip is this, okay? This test is adaptive. What does adaptive mean? Changing, right? So... What it actually means is, what's your name? Chance. Chance. Chance goes, takes the first question, and he gets it right. right? It's a bit hard. Next question gets right. It's a little bit harder. So it gets to his level. Levels out. So we know where Chance lies. Right? The problem is, is this test gives you some features that kind of put you at a disadvantage. Right? How many people ever check the flag up top? I flag a question. Oh, I'm not sure about that. I'm going to flag it, right? Makes sense, right? Uh, I'm gonna come back to that one. I'm not quite sure, right? But the problem is, is if you flag a question, it's telling the computer system you got it wrong. You know you didn't, right? So tip number two is, what is it? No, that's three. What's number two? Don't skip. Yes, great job, right? Rule number two is don't skip questions. Right? What's rule number two? Don't skip. Don't skip, don't flag, don't skip questions. Good. Last thing, and I'll get out of your hair. You may not know this about Mr. Larson, but Mr. Larson, before he got here, right, I was a softball and a football coach, right? Why is that important with an EOC? Well, on all my football teams, when it got to the fourth quarter, I'd have everybody on the team. Didn't matter who you were, you had to put the four up in the air. Right? You had to put the number four on your fingers up in the air. Why, Why do you think I had to do that? Go ahead. Well, oh, I got bad ears. I can't hear. That's, that's, that's a reminder. A reminder of what? what is, why do you think I had him do that? Is it fourth quarter? What, what happens that what comes after the fourth quarter? The game is over. Okay, now take it back to the OC. Right? I need you to finish strong, right? Because usually the difference between passing and failing that EOC comes down to two or three questions. Where do you think most people get those two or three questions wrong? At the end, right? So if I had everybody that's taking the EOC say, oh, man, that crazy Mr. Larson told me to put my fourth quarter up when I got to the end of the test because I need to finish strong. And I focus in on those last five, five or so questions. I get those right. I have a better chance of passing, right? Okay. So give me the three again. Number one is what? Number two is what? Number three is what? Finish on. Save the time. Don't skip. Finish on. Everybody got me? All right. I hope I've been entertaining for you. Sorry to take up your time. We're good. Okay. Appreciate you. Thank you. Right. Have a great day. So the, the geometry is also adapted? Yeah.
Yeah, they were. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fun time. That right now? <sighs> All right. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you. There's <coughs> something about first responders. Yeah, no, don't. I'll see. I'm not sending you. Uh, all right, so that got recorded as well, but I wasn't going to mention a hand that we were recording. I figured he wouldn't say anything. Either, so, um, really quickly, then I'm going to. So, oh, so we said opposite sides parallel. So, a rhombus is a parallelogram. Diagonals, uh, by I'm sorry, actually, they do bisect each other also. Only for a rhombus, though, a kite. So again, look at a kite to the right. That obviously is not bisecting. Both of them don't get bisected. One does get bisected. This one is bisected right there. And then for that shape, good. These two are congruent. They're not, there's no parallel sides. So that is not a parallelogram. A kite is not a parallelogram. But you do have some sides that are congruent. And what's true about the angles for both rhombus and one of the angles for a kite? Well, the inside, but what about from the angles that are the vertices? What happens? Opposite angles are the same in a rhombus, so the opposite angles would be congruent. Now, here, these are congruent, but the other ones are not congruent. But what else? There's one more thing, and then we've covered pretty much all the review for those, which we'll do more review on that later, too. But what's true about that little section right there? Yeah, the angles get bisected. In a rhombus, both of them. So that would be congruent to that. And since the original angles were congruent, that would be congruent to, to that as well. And they'd all be the same. These would also be congruent as well. And since the original angles opposite each other were congruent, all four of those would be. Over here, only one angle gets, or one opposite pair gets bisected. These down here get bisected. I'm um, trying to run out of room. That gets bisected and that gets bisected. It is not the same as these two little ones over here because we didn't start with the same angle. Clearly one angle is a lot skinnier than the other one when we started. So it does get bisected on the far right. Oh, hold on. I'm gonna slide it. Uh, I can move with it then. Oh, that still works. Though. So the, the starting angles on the left and the right here were not the same. So when we bisect them, those will all be the same. Just the two where it gets bisected are congruent. Uh, the top and the bottom are the same, but they don't get bisected. So make sure you understand the top and the bottom don't get bisected. If you're ever confused about what's congruent, draw a shape where it really exaggerates the picture. Like this shape here, if I draw it really skinny, Now it's easier to see what's congruent and what's not congruent. These angles still look like they could be congruent. Like they still look like they're about the same size. Clearly these angles here are not the same size. So if you draw an exaggerated version of you, you're thinking, well, could those be congruent? Sometimes it's still a kite. So this would still be bisecting the angles going left and right. That'd still be a bisector. Clearly, this is not bisecting now. It's pretty easy to see that now that doesn't bisect the angle. So a lot of times, that's a good strategy. Whatever is true for one kite has to be true for every kite you can draw. So draw in a very exaggerated version of that shape. That works for a lot of other shapes also, like a parallelogram. If it's hard to tell from just a pretty general parallelogram, we'll then draw a super skinny Draw a super skinny one and see if all that stuff would still be true that you thought might be true initially. And a lot of times it'll be very obvious, oh wait, that can't be true. Because if it's true for one shape, it's got to be true for all of the shapes, no matter how you draw them. Uh, all right, so we got to do this super fast. I'm only going to probably get through one or two of these since he came in, but they're all the exact same concept. If you want to memorize the formulas, 
memorize the formulas. I'm not going to teach it that way because that's not teaching. You're just memorizing. I don't need to teach you that. You just need to plug in numbers. You got to be able to figure out the diagonal. So again, here, if that's a six and that's a seven, they haven't given you the diagonal. You need to understand, well, then this is six, seven here and this is six. And then you add those together to get diagonals, 12 and 14. I'm not going to do it that way. Uh, if you would prefer to do it in an understanding way, what do we have inside that figure, really? Bunch of what? A bunch of right angles, but also a bunch of triangles, right? We have a bunch of triangles. You can do every one of these problems just figuring out the areas of triangles and adding them together. What's the area formula for a triangle? You do have to memorize that one. Perfect. So, it, and that's one that I feel like is easier to memorize. A lot of you already just know that one. But the area of a triangle is one half the base times the height. So, area of a triangle, one half base times height. So, if you just memorize that one, you just got a bunch of triangles. Now, what do we learn about height when it comes to? We did it with a parallelogram, but it applies to every shape. We probably did it when we did triangles too. What's true about height? How do we measure height? What's important about the line we draw and define the height? That's the word perpendicular. Where have you been all here? Holy cow. So the line, the height has to be a perpendicular line. Well, we just said the diagonals are perpendicular in these shapes. So we know that's the height. It is perpendicular to that, what would be called the base. In this case, the diagonal is the base. So we have the height. If they've given us anything about a diagonal, then we also have the height. So my base would be the seven plus the seven, one half times the base. The height would be the six. And that's going to give me now that will only give me the top triangle, the red triangle. So what's that? Seven times that is 42. So that just means this one would also be 42 because it's be the same numbers. So 42 and 42 is 84, which is the exact same thing you get if you say one half times uh, 14 times 12. So every single problem, kite. Now for a kite, it's a little trickier. I will show you one of those. You've got to figure out what's the base. You can't just use either diagonal. Like in a rhombus, you can use either diagonal to be the base. Because they're, they're at right angles and they're both bisect. Uh, you can't always use the base. Like I can't necessarily use this as the base because the problem... It is a right angle still, but I don't know what the height is. I can't take this 21 and figure out what those two are because it's not bisect. So I, I have to use the, the correct diagonal there. I have to use that as the base. So think of it turned sideways because I know this line is bisect. So then I would have the height. Um, so it would look kind of like this. So this would be my base. That would be the 21. So that number would be 21. The height would be half of that. Well, I know it's bisected, so it would be half of the 17. So what's that? 8, 8.5 would be that height. But again, I just took half of this because I know this line right here which is the 17, is bisected by that other line. Again, if you don't remember all this stuff about the past shape, then you're going to need to just probably memorize the formulas. But there's you know, not for these two. Yeah, these are not on the reference sheet. Only the parallelogram and the trapezoid have area formulas on the reference sheet. I'll look one more time. I'm going to just look today, but...
Yeah. Nothing. You don't even get the area of a triangle, actually, so you have to memorize that one as well. Yeah, but there is no, there's a formula for the area of a regular polygon, but that has nothing to do with, actually, a rhombus technically is a regular polygon. So. Um, so, yeah, so you will not have these formulas, these, this, you will not have that. That's one you got to memorize. So if you don't get on the EOC, I don't give it to you. But if you're going to memorize it, then you got to make sure you got to memorize. So now if I said one half the base times the height, my height, even though it's upside down, that's still considered the height. It's from a vertex to the base perpendicular. One half of the base times the height. We somebody's have to do that in the calculator. Eleven and a half times eight point five. What is that? So again, I took one half the twenty one. That would be the base. Height is eight point five. It was what? Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Ten and a half. So correct my math. Thank you. So half of twenty one is ten and a half. I'm loving that. So ten and a half times eight point five is what? Eighty nine point two five. So that's eighty nine point two five. But that's only one triangle. That's just the bottom triangle down here. So I would have to realize that top triangle would have the same numbers, 21 and 8.5. And so I would add 89.25 to 89.25 and get what, 179.5 or something like that? Or no, 178.5. We're going to add that and we'll multiply by two over here. 178.5. Yes. So again, I'm not going to go over how to. Memorize a formula. I mean, that's something you just have to do. They in these they gave you the diameter sometimes. Sometimes they gave you half the diameter. So you would just have to understand a lot of these lines are bisected. If they're only giving you half the diameter and you need the whole diameter, then there's a good chance that the diameter is bisected. If you don't remember that, that's the only way you'd be able to solve it is if the diameter is bisected. So that's all we got through in the last class. So I'm going to stop there. Your exit ticket on Thursday absolutely is going to be the circle stuff we did at the beginning. Well, and again, one of them. I, mean, I don't know which one it's going to be. It's just going to be inscribed. And again, oh. yeah, what we did. So there might be a trick to it. Like I'm not just giving you points. You need to do. I'm, I mean, I, I can almost guarantee you, though, it's going to come from something we did in class, something from inscribed animals. So if you need to take a picture of this board so you can go back and look at some of the practice problems, I'll probably just pull one of the practice problems. So if you go back and practice those problems, it'll pretty good chance it'll be, if not exactly like one of those problems, pretty similar. And then same thing for the other problem. If you go back and practice I guess that was the tangent lines lesson. So if you go back and practice the problems I assigned from tangent lines, and you specifically practice the ones where the lines cross in the middle, then you should be good. So I, I might then also add another one. I'll see you one more time. Actually, I won't see you. Honestly, I don't. I actually don't. Oh, so yeah, remember, some of you are going to miss some of the exit tickets. It's because you're going to be testing. So don't don't count on being present for every exit ticket. So you need to take advantage of the ones that you are here for. So make sure you're ready for all of them. Uh, so if you want to come over here, you can pick one out. Ow! Can I leave my water bottle in here? Like there's a big people. Follow one. They're trying to return more. I don't want to finish. I sure don't remember seeing one yesterday. Did you look yesterday? You read the answer. Which way? Which way?
Uh, nobody gave one to me, and I sure don't remember seeing one. I don't know what the uh, it's possible that the I would doubt the operations people would have done that. Oh, did I already say that's this is the last week for the shirt? Yeah, you haven't signed, I did. Okay. I'm not a responder, but I don't know if that is so weird how they use that blue and that pink. One page at the end of the book. Well, you got anywhere else? In I know. I, I mean, I don't know. Know. you guys love it. The kind of color you guys love. Right? They didn't do it until the very last, almost the last lesson of the last chapter. Where in the world did all that math come from today? I don't know. I think it's because since I know that we're done. Did you, did you have equipment? to study a lot for that particular lesson or something back in the day? No, or? I don't know what I did. That was old stuff. Like that wasn't it. It's not even like, you know, you would have tutored recently on it. From fire. I think it's because I know that the quizzes are over with, so now I remember. So now you remember? Um, are you coming in? So I'm giving you a 70 on that one you took. Are you, do you have any other ones you're going to tutor for or take? Uh, three? Yeah. So that's a little bit of what we did for the bell work. So that'll help you with that also for, yeah, so that's a good one to run for sure. You're doing that at lunch or after school? Yeah. I'm not going to probably post any more tutorings after school. Okay. But I'll, I'm always here till like 240, 245. Okay. So just if you want to do it, just check with me to make sure that I don't have meetings or something. But what? I finished class yesterday. Oh, yeah? yeah you should play. The, uh, it would have been nice for you to play it earlier, but they're always looking for kids to play tennis. I might co why not coach in tennis one day. That's why I played in high school. That was, I won districts in tennis, should have won state. That's a good sport. I'm just, it's, but you can play it forever. Like you can just play it with friends. Yeah. Like, it was like mostly like it, they wasn't grown, but like there was like twenty like it was ladies. It's a like, good it's a good sport just to have a feel for it. Like yeah, you know, you may not ever be competitive in it, but there'll always be people like it's good exercise you can get with friends and stuff. So that's fun. Yeah. Um. Well, I hope I don't know which is gonna be back. Not back anytime soon either. You gotta figure out what to do if she's on the back. Uh, you do your your English um this Wednesday, right? Yes. So after that, we can figure out with Miss Davis maybe if there's a time you can come in and maybe we can like do a tutoring session and also take a quiz maybe or something in that session that's okay uh we'll have to i guess run that by and see if that would work well yeah she's with you all day long I, she goes to every class no oh no no she only comes here oh really oh i didn't know that okay all right that might change this a little bit we'll have to see if she's got availability to do that with us or not oh i gotta stop the recording yeah miss k yeah miss k because Miss Kate teaches other students too. So she oh, so she may not be able to do that, huh? Um, I I didn't did not realize that. I mean, I'm sure she probably told it to me, but I just forgot it. Yeah. 